Today I am really excited to share with you the transformation of this chair from drab to fab. Before we start upholstering and painting, we are going to have to disassemble the chair to a certain degree. I started by removing these two screws on the back that hold the arms in place. I also removed the screws that were holding the seat cushion onto the chair frame as well as the screws holding the back section of the chair onto the front section of the chair. And now it's just a matter of prying the back piece of the chair off. Since I have already removed all of the screws holding the cushion on, that will also pop off easily. Before you get too far along, make sure you round up all those bits and pieces and screws that you've removed and put them somewhere labeled so you can find them later when you need them. Now I'm left with two sections. This is the arms, the seat cushion, and the front legs, and of course, the back. I'm removing the trim edge off of the back of the chair and the easiest way to do that is just to find an end of it usually near the bottom, grip it with a pair of pliers and just pull it off. Works well if you stand on it. Don't forget to go around with your pliers and remove all those staples. So now we're going to do a little bit of painting. And because the finish on this chair is quite glossy, we're gonna start by using a gripper primer. You don't need very much of this, just a very thin coat will ensure that your paint adheres. I'm using General Finishes Lamp Black Milk Paint on the chair. I'm using a small blending brush to apply the paint. I find that that gives me the smoothest finish. In total, I ended up using about three coats of the lamp black. You don't really need to worry about taping off or protecting the fabric because you're going to end up covering this fabric over anyway. So go ahead and just apply your paint to the back section of the chair on the back and the front. So I do have a little bit of uh, sticking between the fabric and the wood because I didn't protect the fabric section but no worries you can just push this down to break the seal or you can run a dull butter knife around the edge. I cut a piece of fabric large enough to cover the entire back of the chair and pay attention to the direction of the fabric if you've got a pattern. Here's a really easy way to get the perfect circle for the back of your chair. Start by tucking your fabric onto the back right side down and make sure that your pattern is perfectly centered. And then I'm just using a thin Sharpie here to mark the edge of the circle around the wood. Now we have the correct amount of fabric to cover the back of the chair. You're going to want to cut around this line by about a quarter inch to a half an inch so that you have enough fabric to tuck underneath the wood. Now center your fabric right side up and ensuring that your pattern is nice and straight. I'm using Elmer's spray adhesive. Keeping your pattern straight, fold back one half of the fabric and apply the spray adhesive to one side. I would suggest actually covering up the painted area a little bit when you do this. I didn't and I ended up having to go back and do a little bit of cleanup. Then fold your fabric back onto the adhesive and smooth into place making sure there are no wrinkles. And repeat for the other side. Note that this time I took the trouble to cover up the wood trim and saved me a little bit of cleanup at the end. 
Now that the fabric has nicely adhered to the back, I'm using a butter knife which has a nice dull edge on it and I'm just using that to tuck the fabric underneath the wood. So this is where you don't want to have too much of a salvage edge or you'll have a little bit sticking out. And then just work your way all the way around until it's all tucked in. If you've left yourself too much of a salvage edge, you can just pull that fabric back, trim up the edge and carry on. And here is the back of the chair complete. Now we're gonna apply fabric to the front of the chair. Flip it over. It's a good idea to give it a bit of a lint brush before applying the new fabric or the spray adhesive to get any bits of lint off. I pre-cut a piece of fabric to the correct size to cover the back of the chair, taking into account the nap of the fabric and the pattern. To protect the wood trim that's already been painted, I used a piece of packing paper and laid it on top of the chair and then just traced around where the raised portion of the cushion is. I then cut out the inside section of that, leaving the outside intact, and I taped it around the cushion and used the masking tape to fill in any gaps. I had previously placed the fabric right side down and outlined the back fabric section of the chair and then I cut it out. So using the same method as we did for the seat section of the chair, I am laying the piece of fabric over the entire back cushion and then folding back half. Apply a spray adhesive and this is why we put the paper on to protect our paint. Fold back over the spray adhesive and smooth into place. Now we're going to use the stapler to staple down all of the outside edges and you want to pay attention to the fact that you're stapling in the crease. You don't want to staple the wood, you want to staple into the crease where the previous fabric is stapled down. And trim away any excess fabric. There's the back finished and the front. And the last bit that you're going to need to do for the front back section of the chair is to add trim. I decided to go with a braided rope style trim for this project. Use whatever trim works well with your pattern and your fabric. The trim is attached to the back of the chair just using hot glue. It's a good idea to start your application at the bottom section of the chair so that that will be the least likely visible area. I found it worked best to do a small section at a time since the hot glue has a tendency to dry quite quickly. So I just did a small, generally a two to three inch section and then press the trim down. You want to make sure that you're covering up all of the staples and any fabric edges. If your edges are sticking out, just tuck them underneath the trim before gluing it in place. Now it's time to do the seat cushion and Sage is going to lend us a hand or a paw. Since this fabric is in really good shape and it's not stained and doesn't have any smells or anything, I'm actually not going to remove the main part of the fabric. I'm just going to remove the edging. So in order to do that, I'm going to first take the backing off. I started with a flathead screwdriver and I just pried up the staples that are holding the backing on. This was just attached with staples and not glue, so it's not too difficult to remove. And once you're complete, don't forget to remove those staples. And of course, apply the necessary pets and bum rubs where required. Continue removing all of the edging all the way around the seat cushion and I am going to reuse the backing and as I said, I'm going to leave the existing fabric on and just apply the new fabric right over top of it. 
I cut a piece of fabric large enough to cover the entirety of the cushion with about an extra four inches all the way around to fold over onto the back. Once I ensured that the pattern was properly centered on the cushion, I folded half of it back to the center line, which I had marked both on the back of the fabric and on the cushion. I applied spray adhesive to the exposed side of the top of the cushion. And then I folded it back onto the tacky glue and smoothed it into place. And then we just repeat the process on the other side. I'm using a staple gun attached to a compressor, an air compressor. This is a Surebonder staple gun. I bought this off of Amazon and I highly recommend it. It's an excellent stapler. So as you can see, I left the backing in place and the fabric I just started by doing opposite sides so one or two staples in each side all the way around and then once you've got all the sides done then you go back and you do all the in-between staples I'm actually not stapling on the backing although it does look like that and then you want to pull it tight make sure there's no creases in it and then continue on until you get to your corners and then you want to do your corners last so when you get to the corners, what you're going to, going to want to do is to pull the fabric as flat as you can so that it's flat on the outside edge of the chair. And with this chair base, there's like a cutout in the corner section. And keep in mind that that's where the leg is going to sit. So you, can, you don't want it lumpy so the leg will fit in there flat. But if you've got a, a little crease or, or a fold in there, it's fine. You won't really see it. So basically it's just a matter of tugging and folding the fabric so that you have as little creases in the outside edge as possible. Now we're going to trim off any excess bulk just using some scissors before placing the backing over the fabric. I reused the existing backing, which I left par partially stapled in place, and I'm just going to put it in place with more staples from my pneumatic staple gun. Once the seat cushion is covered and the backing is in place, we are going to add some edging. I purchased this trim on a roll at the fabric store. If you wanted to match the fabric to your main color, you can just purchase this cording that's inside and you could wrap your fabric around it. Cut a piece of trim that is slightly longer than the section that you're going to be attaching it to. Start by securing one end using your staple gun and then you're just going to want to press it down with your hands to make sure it's right at the edge and staple it in place. The trim is just going to be visible between the bottom of the cushion and the top of the wooden part of the chair. It just gives a really nice, clean, finished edge to the chair. Now we're going to take that bag of screws and bits and pieces that we put away earlier and we are going to reassemble the chair by first attaching the seat portion back onto the frame of the chair and then we're going to reattach the back section of the chair using the screws to attach the arms. And that is how you take a boring old chair with good bones and turn it from this into this. The options are limitless, so let your personality shine through. Oh, one second before you go. I have another video here that I think you're going to love. Check it out.